I'm an ever rolling wheel without a destination wheel. I'm an ever spinning time whirling around till I try. Oh, what am I to do? Da, 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 da. My mind is in a world. Ooh. Oh, 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 let me stop. Give me a little. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my illustrious family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me where we talk about this crazy stuff that make us wonder if we inside the mental house or if the mental house is really there. Either way it go, it's some really, really crazy stuff going on, right? So listen to this. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Y'all don't know. Okay. Now, listen, this was taken from the Daily Mail, and I just got to read this because it's too crazy. Yep, yep, yep. Biden snapped at Kamala so harshly, even Republican senators were taken aback during a meeting where the president was trying to persuade the GOP members to back his $1 trillion social spending plan. Uh, this was what a book claims. Now, I don't know how true this is. Anyway, it says, in the meeting last May, Biden tried to persuade Republican lawmakers to support a $1 trillion infrastructure spending. While Biden was already in for a compromise, Harris thought the bill was skimpy. So um, Harris began to make the case for a larger package than the one the Republicans seemed to have in mind. Biden dismissed her comment immediately. The authors wrote in such a harsh tone that even the Republican senators were taken aback. Biden was typically scrupulously respectful of his second in command, but the moment revealed that infrastructure negotiations were his and his alone. Now, now that's what this. Um, book claims, okay? So it says that Vice President Kamala Harris quickly learned not to come between President Joe Biden and his negotiations with Congress. When the president once snapped at her so harshly, even Republican senators again in the meeting were shocked. Um, uh, and while Biden was ready for a compromise, Harris all uh, thought the bill was just too skimpy. Harris thought that there was something missing from the conversation. New York Times reporter Jonathan Martin and Alexander Burns wrote in their book, this will not pass. Trump, Biden, and the battle for the America's future. This is the name of their book. Anyway, it says she began turning the conversation toward democratic priorities including family and social spending, which were originally included in the larger Build Back Better bill. Okay, just so y'all know. <laughs> she began to make a case for a larger package than the one the Republicans seem to have in mind. Biden dismissed her comment immediately, though Arthur wrote, in such a harsh tone that even the senators were taken back. It was like, damn! Anyway, the latest revelations will, uh, and this will not pass, includes Jill Biden's, uh, was opposed that her husband selected Harris as his running mate after she attacked him during a Democratic debate in 2019. It also follows reports that last year of the tension between Biden and Harris and the allegations of bullying and a toxic culture from staff in her office. Biden also, according to the book, expressed 
reservations himself about selecting Harris as his ticket mate. But, you know, since Barack Obama selected him, this is all this court, uh, corporate madness, he decided to make it look aesthetically pleasing by getting him a nigger. Okay? Noting her past romantic relationships with Willie Brown, the ca uh, California politician who appointed Harris to a pair of minor political positions, the book said that Biden described the romance as the kind of thing that should be off limits. Harris had a relationship with Brown, who later served as San Francisco mayor, uh, and that was between 1994 and 1995 when Harris was beginning her career in the Alameda County uh, District Attorney's Office. Other meetings, Harris kept quiet and there was less friction. Less friction. The reporters once wrote in one of the meetings that soon after Biden and Harris took office, the White House set up with governors to discuss coronavirus release. Maryland Governor Larry Hogan said that Biden took charge and was eager to work with the governors. But he said that Harris's role in the meeting was very strange. Harris did not say a word, Hogan reportedly said, leaving him to even question whether she was just being differential to the president or didn't want to step on his toes. Harris reportedly felt belittled by the president's staff, but Biden's team did not take her concerns seriously at all. Some of Harris, Harris's advisors believed that the president's almost entirely white inner circle did not show the vice president the respect she deserved. Martin and Burns wrote, Harris was worried that Biden's staff looked down on her and that she was fixated on real uh, perceived snubs in ways that the West Wing found tedious. What the hell did you expect? I mean, I mean, that's just really, 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 really. And again, I have dealt with my mother and my father. I'm still dealing with my mom. God bless her. And um, a deterioration of your mental capacities is very obvious. And episodes like this is just common. And if you would ask me to just look at Biden, I would think that he's in the early stages, allegedly, of some type of dementia. Um, and lights on, nobody home, however you want to describe it. Okay? Yeah. Lights on, nobody home. Okay. Harris even sent out Chief of Staff Tina Fl Flournoy to scold by the staffers for not standing up when she entered the room, the way they do for the president. The vice president took it as a sign of disrespect. Biden asked Harris, um, Biden tasked Harris with addressing immigration, and the vice president took opportunities to share her dissatisfaction with the role. So according to the book, Harris A's felt that the task was addressing the southern border crisis in any way was politically undesirable and wanted the vice president to have a softball foreign policy assignment like overseeing relations with Nordic countries. Hmm. Staff, um, I mean... Staff floated the possibility of the vice president overseeing relations with the Nordic countries, a low-risk diplomatic assignment that might have helped Harris get adjusted to the international stage when welcoming venues like Oslo and Copenhagen, authors wrote. <laughs> they decided that the prospect of overlooking Nordic countries was rejected by White House aides and even privately mocked. Oh, Lord. More irritating to Biden's aides was when they learned that the vice president wanted to plan a major speech to outline her view of foreign policy. 
Biden aides veto the idea. Why should a vice president have their own independently articulated view of global affairs? Biden's team questioned. And the border crisis was transferred from Biden's portfolio to Harris shortly after inauguration. After a trip to Guatemala and Mexico that drew criticism in the press, Biden's chief of staff, Ron Klain, reminded her she was hardly the first vice president to air tough coverage. So Biden and Harris had reportedly said little about the portfolio she should uh, she would take on in the runner up to inauguration day. And once in office, a senator close to Harris claimed that the vice president's frustration level was up, up the stratosphere when she realized her political flight path looked like a, a slowly rolling Greek tragedy. <laughs> oh, man, this is so insane. So this is um this, this is this book again. Uh, he snaps on her, huh? And like I said, that's what that behavior looks like. Especially if you ask them a question that they, or even say something that they, that they don't remotely think that you have any right to ask them. <laughs> oh God. You could be letting in the Calvary. Okay? And I can imagine that it's a serious, toxic work environment. Anyway, anyway, excuse me, the, the name of this book is um, This Will Not Pass, Trump, Biden, and the Battle for America's Future. All right. I'll see y'all in the next video.